Hello relatives in this wonderful season of rebirth and renewal. Say welcome to this week's Schlagbite entitled Mushroom Relief for the week December 22nd, 2008. Twelve weeks ago, I was presented with my eighth grandchild, a little boy whose name is Arlo. He's named after both his grandfathers. My wife and I visited our kids and new grandson in their home on the island of Kauai. My son is a mycologist, a mushroom expert, and a full-time mushroom farmer who supplies these exquisite organic mushrooms all over the islands. My daughter is a talented yoga instructor and supplements their income. I had a chance to uh, spend some time watching him in his sterile laboratory where he develops new strains and experiments with creating new growing environments. And the subject came up about growing the hallucinogenic magic mushroom, psilocybin, which would be a lucrative cash crop. But alas, it's against the law. In 1970, Congress made it illegal to possess psilocybin mushrooms and other hallucinogens, classifying them as Schedule I drugs. They define them as having no legitimate medical use, and it's unfortunate because healers for thousands of years have used them to relieve suffering, and there is considerable research using hallucinogenic mushrooms as an effective treatment tool, for example, for cluster headaches. Cluster headaches affect about a million Americans and can be so severe they're called suicide headaches. No treatment has yet been shown to extend remission from its pain. Dr. John Halpern, a psychiatrist at Harvard's McLean Hospital, recently reported in the journal Neurology that a majority of the 48 patients who had taken hallucinogenic mushrooms found partial or complete relief from their cluster attacks. And these were not people that you might uh, expect from the drug culture. They were lawyers and teachers, business owners, who had painful and debilitating conditions and found meaningful relief. Dr. Charles Grubb, a UCLA psychiatrist, has been using psilocybin mushrooms under a special DEA permit, looking at its ability to alleviate suffering in the terminally ill. A colleague of mine at the University of Arizona Medical School, Dr. Francisco Moreno, has been using psilocybin mushrooms to treat patients with obsessive compulsive disorder with promising results. It's been my experience and that of many other psychiatrists that they could impart a lasting sense of spirituality and connection and it uh, might prove effective in the future in treating patients with mental disorders and addictions. Don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating the recreational use of psychedelic mushrooms because their effect remains unpredictable. But what I am saying is that we ought to be listening to our shamanic ancestors who use them extensively. And we ought to be supporting research in this area because they have enormous potential and clinical utility. And let's not forget the relief that it would bring to my children who are struggling organic mushroom farmers. And I say to you, my relatives, in this Christmas and New Year season, I say to all of you that we are all growing something. May whatever it is you grow, grow with love and in peace. Have a joyous season. My blessings to you all. I say this for all my relations. Mitakuyasi.